Ready for roll call? David? Mel? Here. I think you have to say it for the record. Here. Maggie? Here. Vern? Here. Nancy? Mr. Justice Loftcheck? Nothing more. Just break off the dog. Okay. Dale's up there. And Dale? Here. What? And is Bob there? Uh, Mr. Chair, I do not currently see Bob on the call. Oh, okay. And it is 1.15, so we can proceed with our first item. So we are hearing HMA 23110 for 180 Lawnhurst Drive in Hamilton. We have the owner or agent, sorry, registered to speak and uh, Councillor Paul is registered to speak as well as one interested party. Okay, applicant's name for the record. Applicant, we there? Questionable start. <laughs> Ma'am, your name and address for the record, please. <laughs> okay, I know that, but the record needs it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think you're the only person who's here in person, so you can come to the table if you'd like. And yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, I do not currently see the owner or the agent for the file on the call. Okay, so typically in this situation, we can't really have a hearing without the applicant. So we would either stand it down in the hopes that they show up at some time in the not too distant future, or we can defer it to another hearing. I'm sure that's not convenient for you. Sorry, you just have to uh, hit the microphone. Yeah. Where's the microphone here? Uh, so there's a yeah. the white paper. So just below the white paper, there's an area. There you got it. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, if you want it postpone it later in the day, I cannot do it if you want to do it another day. But I know there's a lot of interested parties here that are so we're opposing this and I'm representing them. So I'm not representing them. I want to hear what they have to say. So if it's another day, you will have to move it. Well, I'll give you the option. Typically, we can at this time just defer it. And if they show up later, say too bad, it's going to be on another day. So if you don't want to think about it or hang around, we can just defer it to another day or we can stand it down for like a half hour or something. Yes, Mr. Chair, I was hoping you would just put it down for half an hour. That would give Council time to get to her next meeting. And ideally... With no, her the... next meeting's at 2, so that's no good. Yeah, my next meeting no. is at 2. Yeah, which is only one eighteen. Yeah, okay. So it's up to you. I, I don't mind coming right back after the meeting. I have a feeling meeting. they'll show. Okay, so we'll defer it for a half hour. And All when right. they show up, we'll make them wait. We'll contact you. Do you know we can get a hold of you quickly? Yes, uh, I will uh, give my phone number to uh, you. Pro uh, I will at the, uh, at the office there. Should yeah. I give my phone number and sure. they'll contact me? Or we'll just come and get you or something. Okay, uh, my office is in there, whatever you want to do. We'll come and get you. Okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry, we, we can't access that back room. We don't have permissions. Okay. So if you um, give your contact information in the room 222, we'll see what we can do. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Okay, so um, motion to stand it down for a half hour. No. Move by bound. All in favor? And if it's not here within a half hour, then it gets stood down to another meeting. <laughs> This is Belvedere. This one could be tabled too. That's a bit recommend. Oh, sorry.
Right. And we're all set for the next file. We're hearing HMB 22133 for 14 Belvedere Avenue in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak as well as several interested parties. Okay, is the applicant available? Uh, this is James Thomas, Major Clark and Associates, speaking on behalf of the applicant. Okay, before I introduce the application and introduce the interested parties, I'm sure you read the comments, but there's a comments about tabling this. Is that going to be your inclination before we open this up? Or are you intending to proceed today? Uh, yeah, we read the comments and uh, we do agree with the recommendation to table. It'll give us enough time to acquire the required studies that were listed in the uh, conditional. Okay, so if you're okay, I'll make a motion, but I want to introduce the interested parties first. Okay. Okay. Okay, for the, are everyone here for Belvedere? Okay, so what's happened is applications come out, they're circulated, the city staff puts out comments, and we usually get them two days before the hearing, as does the applicant. The municipal departments in this particular application suggest it be tabled to get more clarification, more information, and potentially more discussion on to modify or change things to make things better for everybody. So because the municipal departments have requested that this be tabled, and I've spoken with the applicant who has agreed to same, what's gonna happen is, is this is gonna be tabled. It's gonna be modified or changed potentially to some effect. You will receive notice at that time and it will be for another hearing potentially in the future, but it won't be heard today. Will there be a full mail out again or should I get the names and addresses of the people that are here right now? Um, I believe if they registered and they requested to be provided a notice, of, uh, they would be um, circulated in okay. the future. So I will now take a motion for tabling. And Seconder. All in favor? Opposed. Carried. Carried. Thank you. None opposed. Opposed. Now just give me one sec. I'm going to give my copy of the comments to someone there in case they didn't get them. Right. So for the interest of the interested party, so the item is not being dealt with today, you will be notified um, if you provided your contact information of a new date when it is assigned one in the future. Hey, uh, not really, but have you received notice of the comments that were posted? Okay, so you have, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Just ask, what does tabling? Tabling means it's more complicated than a routine one and the city staff wants more time to review, make comments, etc. Then the city staff will provide us with their view as to whether they're in favor of it or against it, but here they said they want it tabled. So it's not the applicant, it's not you, it's city staff. So this could change, be redone, and you'll be notified of that in the future. And an average length of time for that would be? Uh, the earliest would be a month, but if there's issues, it could be several months or it may go away and never come back. I've seen all sorts of things over the years. I bet you have. <laughs> okay, thank you all for coming and we'll see you in the future. Thank you. Sir? Uh, by email or whatever, is it too late for those to be Nope, now that it's tabled, you can send as much of stuff as you want in until it's brought back, so you, you put more in. Okay, yeah, no problem. That was a nice way to deal with it. Uh, Mr. Chair, we do have the agent on now for uh, HMA 23110 for 180 Lawnhurst. Would you like us to? Yeah, I'm not calling it until uh, Esther's okay. back. So if she can get here, we can call it. Okay, we'll ask uh, for her to be contacted. Just a minute. And if you want to do one before then, that's fine yes. too. Uh, I'm the agent for 118 uh, Chair. Sorry about that. I was just Hang having. This got deferred, and we have to get the counselor back. Thank you.
We'll move on. Sorry. We'll move on to the next item, and we'll have uh, Councillor Paul's come back. As soon as she gets back, we'll maneuver it back in. All right, and we are all set for the next items. We are hearing uh, SCB 22-134 and SCA 22-413 for 1097 North Service Road in Stony Creek. We have the agent registered to speak as well as uh, staff from Hamilton Conservation Authority. Okay, is the applicant available for this application to speak? Yeah, so if you just come forward to the table and then just uh, make sure your microphone is turned on when you're speaking. Brilliant. Name for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jared Marcus from Ar Arcadis IBI Group. That's still tough to spit out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and someone from city staff is here as well. You were saying? Uh, the Co Conservation Authority. Oh, Conservation, sorry. Are they there? Yes, hi, it's Kathy Claus with the Hamilton Conservation Authority. Okay. Um, would you like the applicant to introduce first, or do you want to say what your uh, thoughts are first and the applicant can respond? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can go ahead with my thoughts because um, yeah, I did have please. a couple questions. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so the property is regulated by the Hamilton Conservation Authority um, because it's adjacent to Lake Ontario, so there are flooding and erosion hazards associated with the lake. <clears throat> and um, our policies uh, require two things. Uh, first of all, all development must be located outside of hazard limits. So a shoreline hazard assessment was completed for the property in 2020, and it identified hazard limits for the site. Um, I do want to note that in the plan provided, it appears that a portion of the proposed future building envelope of lot two is within the hazard limits. So since no development is permitted within hazard limits, the developable area on lot two, two will require revision. Um, and that's just something that the committee should consider. Second, um, our policies require that each lot uh, provide a six meter erosion access allowance from the road, um, which would be Trillium Avenue in this case, to and along the shoreline to allow uh, equipment to access the site for maintenance of shoreline protection laws. So in previous comments for a lot line adjustment for 32 Trillium Avenue, the Conservation Authority advised that a shared easement between 32 Trillium and 1097 North Service Road would be required. And um, I note that this is shown on the plans. I just had a question um, about whether the shared easements have already been registered on title or not. Okay, for the applicant, you've heard the comments, which you're welcome to respond. However, there is a point in the comments about potentially tabling this. So based on what you've heard in the comments, do you wish to proceed or do you wish to table? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make some comments towards the application that I think can resolve some of the concerns, uh, particularly the tabling comment, uh, as well as potentially address uh, the HCA's comments. So I read that as you want to proceed with the application. At present, yes. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I did submit two images uh, to the committee, if those are possible to, I don't know if that gets shared on the screen or if you have them in front of you, I can. I would like to speak to those. Yeah, yeah those would be the images. Um, if you have them in color, Mr. Chair, uh, the first one was just a general uh, neighborhood context map. Uh, you heard Ms. Plaw's comments about the previous application for 32 Trillium. That's why you see the jog in the property. Those lands were uh, di divided from 32 and merged with 1097. At the same time as those applications, uh, easements were created over that uh, jog in the property in favor of the city of Hamilton. Uh, there are sewers that run through that from Trillium to the service road. Uh, at the same time, there were easements registered over 32 Trillium in favor of 1097. North Service Road and easement over 1097 in favor of 32 Trillium. And it's my understanding that those are registered and existing today. 
Um, you'll note though on that image that that is a very old image, that existing one-story dwelling has since been demolished and a two-story dwelling has been constructed uh, totally up against the west property line set back approximately 1.25 metres. So that's existing today. So that image is quite old on Google. We you know, we didn't have the ability to get a newer image. Uh, so that's just some context of the neighborhood for you. The next image shows in color the proposed application. Uh, and I felt it was important to show it in color so it's a little more clear. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the gray, uh, the gray dwelling on the west side. That is the existing two-story dwelling that was recently constructed. Uh, that currently uh, is a property that fronts the service road. So the westerly boundary is a side lot line Line and the lakeshore is a rear lot line. So that dwelling exists today with a 1.25 meter side yard. The proposal is to sever uh, a property around that house which would front onto Trillium Avenue. And that would leave two retained parcels. The yellow parcel fronting onto the service road would fully comply with zoning. And the future uh, green lot to the east would have its frontage on Trillium. And that's where the minor variance applications come in. Uh, the minor variance applications are for, uh, or application singular, is for a rear lot line reduction. Uh, so again, we talked about that existing dwelling having a existing yard abutting the west, which is a side yard today, but giving the orientation of the front lot line on Trillium, that would now technically be a rear yard. And that same condition would apply to the future lot two, which is in green. So if we were to look at a hypothetical scenario scenario where lot three didn't exist and we severed those lots straight down to the service road, you end up with two lots and dwellings that back onto the lake and have side yards on your east and your west. When you sever out the third lot and have frontages on Trillium, you end up with those westerly lot lines being rear yacht lot lines. So the function and the, uh, of the lots is still such that those are side yards and you have a rear yard abutting the lake, but the technical definition is that of a rear lot line being the westerly lot line. And that's where that request for a reduced rear yard comes into play. You'll still have a plus or minus 20 meter setback to the lake, which functions as a rear yard. So in our opinion, we're dealing with technical definitions of a yard here, as opposed to an actual condition of a rear yard that you would normally see on a lot. Uh, the frontages are being reduced as well, and that's to uh, address the, the stub of Trillium, which is only 20 meters wide. Uh, so you'd have 8.3 meters uh, for lot one and 11.8 for lot two. And that's more of a, a function of providing a means of access to the street as opposed to an actual building lot on those sides. So it's really, in our opinion, technical matters to be dealt with. Um, to address uh, the HCA's comments, uh, we do have, we did talk about those existing easements over 32 and 90, 1097, uh, which is on the easterly boundary. We are proposing new easements over lot two in favor of lot one. So coupled with the easement over 32 trillion, that would provide a full six meter access through to the rear yard of all lots. And lot one would then have access through the rear lot of lot Two, So we think we've addressed uh, the, the HCA's uh, concerns with that, uh, but we'd leave that up to their confirmation. Um, the last couple points I did want to want to make is that um, engineering staff did have a concern about the whether we had legal access across uh, part four, which is that jog in the boundary. As I said, there is an existing easement and the written easement I was provided paraphrased states uh, allows unrestricted access over the part in favor of the lands. Uh, so I know in our opinion, that, that concern has been addressed from the develop engineering side. Um, the second last point is just a, a processing point. We've been here before the committee, uh, my colleague John Arians has been before you as well. And we've, we've talked about whether it's appropriate for a zoning bylaw amendment or a minor variance to get to the same end result, which is three lots, whether that's zoning bylaw amendment or minor variance. In our opinion, we've uh, shown that the variances are minor in nature. Uh, so we don't think the zoning bylaw is appropriate. Again, to paraphrase, to paraphrase phrase my colleague, 
we're talking about the color of the horse that we're riding to the finish line. Um, the last point is just that uh, this is a clerical error, I think, on our end. The existing yard is 1.25, and that's the existing zoning requirement for a side yard. Um, when we prepared this, the numbers were rounded up to the nearest whole number, which is why the application or the images say 1.3. So we're just asking for a clerical change to 1.25. And again, that's, that's an error on our part, and we'll, we'll work to rectify that on future applications. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Questions from the committee? Go ahead, Tom. I, I, I'm just talking, I'm wondering about this suggestion of a zoning bylaw variance. Does, does it comply with zoning now? Uh, I mean, does a proposal comply with zoning? Through you, to, through the chair, uh, the current lot, of course, complies, and the current dwelling, of course, complies. But the proposed lots require variances for the rear yard, which I talked about, the 1.3 meters, uh, or 1.25, and the frontage along Trillium. So we we submitted concurrent applications. So the issue is that to support the consent, you need to approve the variances, or as a condition, staff are suggesting that the appropriate mechanism is the zoning bylaw amendment application, and we're well, suggesting. That. Normally, we would, they wouldn't require a zoning bylaw just for some minor variances. I'm, I, I, I'm curious as to the staff's position. Why, it, does it come out in the material? I don't recall reading them. Uh, 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 Sorry, was that a question directed to planning staff? Sorry? Was that a question directed to planning staff? Uh, yeah. I. Uh, I if these are such minor variances, why do the staff suggest a zoning bylaw, or do they? I believe that's being directed to planning staff. I believe there is planning staff here who can comment on that. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Tim Foreman, uh, area planning manager with the development planning suburban team. So this is a um, the request that we have before us. So it's currently zoned in the rural residential RR zone, which for the most part it requires a minimum frontage of 15 meters, and the request is for reduced frontages of within for part uh, part one would be eight meters and for. First, yeah, for law one, be eight meters, and for law two, would be eleven point eight meters. So our recommendation is that the, um, to, in order to align to the intent of the zoning bylaw, that it would be suggested to be rezoned to lands that uh, permit that general lot, uh, lot frontage than the RR zone currently permits. Thank you. And and why, why does staff think that the uh, just minor variances aren't the correct way to go? So in, in our position, so that reduction, so the in the lot frontage of, of 15 meters under the they were residential RR zone, that is a fairly large lot that's reflective of the nature of that rural um, residential zone um, for very large lots. When we're getting to this more of an urban context, such as getting into lot widths so within the 8 to 11 meters, that is more of a, an urban, suburban, uh, typical lot scenario. So we would look to the zones that are more um, fitting to that. So based on that, we consider that the variances would not be minor as they don't meet the intent of the zoning bylaw. It, it appears here that the frontages are just for really a driveway uh, access to the house and the, the actual Width of the lot is is within the lot, and that's where the house is going. Is does that not make a difference? So when we look at these two lots, so the um, when we look at that frontage, so that is the frontage that is on the street. So that is the the lands that well, how we would. Um, it would be viewed well, from the yeah, street. I understand that, but normally the, 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 the house sort of fronts up onto the street. Here, the front of the house is not fronting on the street. The front, the street frontage is just presumably used as a, for a driveway. 
uh, to access the house, which is on the wider part of the lot. So yeah, we do recognize that the the way these lots are oriented that they do have um, the unique shape where the frontage would be that um, easterly extension. Um, that yeah, looking at the the I guess you could say the general shape of the actual lot where the if we were to look at it as the rear yard uh, being along the the lake shore and then the front would actually be that southerly lot line. Um, they are. Um, they are uh, would have wider. They're looking at that. So yeah, lot lot one would be about twenty five meters at its greatest width, and then lot two would be at twenty one meters at its greatest width. Uh, but that's uh, well, that would be the width of those. That's not the how the zoning bylaw defines the um, the dimension for the the lot width. It, the zoning bylaw requires the lot frontage as the minimum requirement. This is sort of an anomaly to the law, bottom line, I guess, is it? I mean, if, if they say the, that in effect, the lake is going to be, a, um, it's going to be a side yard. And the, the, the prop part of the property on Trillium is, is going to be, uh, well, I guess you'd call it frontage illegally, but it's, it's not really related to the house. All right, I, I, okay, I, I understand what you're saying. Thank I got you. the clearance. Okay, David first, then Nancy, then Maggie. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I got a few comments. Um, first of all, I live on the lake, so I'm quite familiar with the setups, quite familiar with the area, quite familiar with the other houses that abut the lake pretty close, a lot closer to the lake. And uh, I don't know if staff actually saw the diagram of the picture of where, how the houses are going to be set up. I think they're just going by lot, and they're making the assumption that side yard, rear yard, and I don't think they quite understand it quite well. I understand the applicant wanting to get the variances before the actual zoning gets allowed, kind of because of we're running into like a snail-like process here in the city. So I feel that they want to get this done probably before the zoning part. And if the zoning says no, then the whole project's set down. So there's other areas where this project can be shut down. Um, so given the fact that that rear yard from the, uh, no disrespect to Hamilton Conservation Authority either, that the rear yard from the lake um, uh, line, there's a 23 meter setback from the house to the um, erosion area. And that's substantial considering most of the houses along that area and in considering even mine is less than 15 meters. Um, there are easements in place for access, as we've been told. So I don't really have an issue with that. And considering the neighbors aren't here on either side to complain about, you know, their side yard setbacks, which they're being misinterpreted as rear yard setbacks. I think this is, um, like I said, they can still do this development off of the service road and just draw a line down the middle versus the front. I mean, there'd be no difference uh, putting in a third or not. So. Um, when time, I would like to make a motion uh, to move this on for approval. Nancy? Did you have a comment, George? Sorry, he kind of had his hand up there. Who? Yeah, but I'm doing staff right now. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Tom. That's thank staff you, committees. David. Uh, I just wanted to clarify, since it was such an extensive and complicated response from, from you, uh, Jared, um, the comment about the shoreline thing that was done. I think that's covered in what David just said, right? With the 23 uh, meter setback going a side yard as opposed to a rear yard. Through the chair to the me member. Um, I, th I think there were, there was a comment from the HCA that the, the, sh the limit of the development had to be outside of a hazard limit and that hazard limit might be a little further into the lot than our current schematic envelope is shown as. Uh, there's no variance requested for that rear lot line and that future dwelling will have to comply with whatever that hazard. So it might be a little smaller uh, than is shown today. We'll, we'll have to cross that bridge, but I don't think there's, from my perspective, there's no concerns about uh, the HCA's comments. We'll have to comply with that. Okay, thank you. Maggie? 
Um, two things. Uh, since there is no variance for area, can I assume that the area meets the zoning bylaw? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. Uh, lots as proposed would meet the zoning bylaw lot area requirement. Okay, and um, you noticed the comment about the noise study. Have you done that? <laughs> uh, through the chair, we uh, it's a requirement that I noted to the owners at the start when they approached me, so they are aware of the requirement uh, for noise, uh, a noise report to deal with uh, potential attenuation. Okay, that is a condition of the severance as well. Correct. Um, do you need, and I could ask conservation as well, do you need a permit from conservation before constructing? Uh, through the chair, I would ultimately defer to the HCA, but it is my understanding that we would need permits from the HCA for development abutting yeah. the shoreline. Okay, thank you. Okay. Final comments from the applicant? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to, uh, it just occurred to me now that through the discussion, if the committee is inclined to approve the variance application, um, I would ask that condition 11 be removed that requires the zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, I, I missed that in my initial comments to the committee. And as well, number 12, I defer to staff, but number 12, I think applies if you were looking at an aerial, you see the existing dwelling, in which case you would have to remove the existing dwelling because the lot lines proposed go through it. Uh, again, that dwelling has been removed and a smaller house obviously that fits within the proposed lot exists. So uh, our, our sub request is that it also be removed uh, or at the least and if required or yeah, if required be added. Okay. Anyone else in the committee? Motion. Um, just a quick, is there a barrier between the highway and, I can't recall if the barrier actually goes there, that uh, between the highway for Norris studies uh, along that way. Is there a barrier there? Uh, through the chair, there is a barrier along that stretch of highway. Uh, I, uh, re noise requirement would still be uh, noise report would still be needed. We also we have to we have to get a land use a building and land use permit from the ministry, so they'll they'll assign their own requirements, uh, which could be above and beyond whatever city staff have asked for. Okay, I'm going to make a motion approval to amend the application to show a 1.25 rear yard versus a 1.3 year yard and striking condition uh, 11 and 12. Is there a seconder for that motion? Nancy, all in favor? Opposed? Approved. Done. Thank you very much for your time. Still have time for Councillor Pulse. <laughs> Yep. Why not? No, just, just sorry. Just give me a minute. Okay. All right, and we're going to go back to HMA twenty three one ten for one eight zero Lawnhurst Drive in Hamilton. We have the agent now, I believe, on the call, and we have Councillor Pauls as well as one interested party for this file. Okay, applicant's name for the record, please. Ronald Dicotto. Okay, have you read the comments that were posted? Yes, I have, Chair. Okay, and is it your intention to proceed with the application at this time? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, would you like to hear from the councillor and the interested parties and respond to what they say in your presentation, or would you like to speak first? No, I would like to hear from the councillor as well as the interested parties, and I will respond following. Okay. Councillor Paws, you got the button pressed? Yes, okay. I do. And thank you again for making time. Uh, uh, back in July, I got a lot of calls from uh, um, that Lawnhurst Drive about this uh, uh, garage. Anyways, uh, when I received um, the Planning and Economic Development uh, Department, uh, and development planning department, they said that they, out of the variance, they've denied them all. So, um, I'm here just to represent the people that all called me and the neighbor that it's really affecting. 
Um, she's, uh, they're an older couple, so they couldn't be here, but I think, uh, I don't know if you received letters or emails because they called me and they said they would be sending emails. So I'm just here to listen and to make sure uh, we get this right. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there an interested party here as well? Uh, yes, we have uh, one registered, Claude Jarvis is registered to speak. Okay. Mr. Jarvis, are you prepared to speak? Yes, I am. Go ahead. So I strongly oppose, uh, thank you this afternoon for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I strongly oppose this minor variance application to facilitate a secondary dwelling unit detached. One of the key notes in this application is number one, please be advised the existing accessory structure garage is not legally existing as the permit was revoked. I agree wholeheartedly with the planning staff's recommendations that minor variance number one be denied. The reduction to the minimum interior side yard is not minor in nature and does not follow the intent of the law or the zoning bylaw. Variances two, three, and four. The proposed variances does not meet the purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw. The variances are not desirable for the appropriate development of the land and are not minor in nature. Staff recommend that the variances as outlined in the notice of the hearing be denied. Also, minor variance number one from the engineering department are recommending denial. I'd like to remind everybody that back in May 17th of 2022, the planning staff gave a presentation to the planning committee. After numerous discussions, it was suggested that they reconvene and meet on the 31st of May, just to make a few housekeeping amendments. I'd like to note that Councillor Danko did say, once housekeeping amendments are made, we are going to see a more strict and consistent application of what is actually in the bylaw. Example, change the offset from seven to six meters then triggers a second variance to change the landscape area. It has a cascading effect. Once the housekeeping amendments, and he presented this to the planning staff, are being made, that we are going to see a more strict application process to the committee of adjustment. Planning staff said to the committee that once this is passed, the intention is to have sessions with staff and committee of adjustment members to make sure there is consistency. Councillor Danko finished on the 31st. Once this is passed, the intention of this bylaw is to have sessions with staff and committee of adjustment members to make sure there is consistency. Secondary dwelling units, if they cannot fit on the existing site and require variances, then the lot is too small. What is happening is we are seeing a laundry list of variances, and this is what frustrates the neighbors and the community. If there's a seven meter setback, then it's seven meters, not six meters. Weeks later, after, after planning staff said that, yes, we're gonna have a more consistent basis, they voted on it, council voted on it overwhelmingly to pass this new zoning bylaw. So here we are today, seven and a half months later, and we continue to see a laundry list of minor variances brought before this committee, and it's disturbing to, to a number of neighbors. Unfortunately, up, us up here in the mountain, we have super mailboxes. We do not get our mail delivered every day. The reason why you don't receive any opposing comments most of the time is because they do not receive it in a timely manner. If you, I, I typically receive my mail, I, I go to my mailbox, I don't know, once a week, every 10 days. By the time I get my mail, it's too late to respond to you guys by the Tuesday noon deadline. For those of us that get our mail delivered, we get it delivered once a week. For instance, the Committee of Adjustment next meeting is March the 2nd. If it's not mailed out today, and these people don't get it until, let's say, Tuesday, that's their mail every Tuesday, by the time they get it the following week, it's already too late. That's why you do not see as many people opposing or comments because we don't see receive the minor variance application notifications until it's too late. So you've heard, you've read the comments from the numerous neighbors. This does not fit within the community. As a matter of fact, it was a stop work order permit issued back in September of 2022 that the existing garage does not exist. I don't understand that. Planning staff is recommending that all four variances be denied until we can find out exactly what's happening with this garage. The previous owners were notified prior to purchasing this property that that garage was illegal. So I will leave it at that and hopefully you will listen to 
uh, Councillor Pauls, and we'll listen to what the applicant has to say. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> applicant, would you like to respond or make your presentation concerning this? Yes, absolutely. I would certainly like to make my my case here on this chair. Uh, so if I may have the ability to uh, share my screen, can I do that? Do I have the ability to share my screen? Yeah, you should have the ability. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So thank you very much uh, for your comments. Uh, Claude, as well as a counselor, and I do apologize for my voice. I am having a bit of a sore throat today. Um, with that said, uh, up on my up on my screen, you guys should probably see a a site plan that was approved. And I do want to state here uh, from the onset that this project was building permits were prepared, and it was actually submitted at, to the building department and it was approved, right? This, this drawing, this uh, site plan that you're looking at, along with the complete permit set, which does include mechanical, as well as site planning and everything like that, was actually approved back on June the 2nd, 2022, right? Later on uh, in September, we received a comment or a letter from, well, that's the client, received a letter from the building department stating that this property permit would be revoked as the the existing garage is unlawful which um you know it, it was definitely baffling i did not understand what that meant uh, so we did inquire to the city as to what exactly that meant and and they stated at the time that the property was not uh the, the existing garage was not actually built with a building permit um, how they determined that, I was not exactly sure at the time, um, but we did get that information back. So I do want to point out here that a lot of the a lot of the notes that were submitted by the zoning department, uh, this 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 garage, had it been lawful, would have met all the requirements for a SDUD secondary dwelling unit detached. It was approved by the city. Uh, we have done a number of these and we know that this meets all the requirements. There's nothing here that is contrary to what is required by zoning or by the building department. Um, I'll also just quickly share here as well um, a quick photo of, of the actual building. There, there, is a, there is a comment and maybe I'll just show this here. Um, this was the letter that was actually sent stating that the, that the property was unlawful right by by a senior supervisor at the building department that the building that the existing detached garage building to contain a secondary unit it was revoked a permit was never obtained for the construction of the accessory dwelling unit so that's what it is i'm here representing the clients on behalf of to establish some variances because the garage was was the garage has its proper setbacks, but if it were to be converted into an ADU or SDU, then it would require uh, further setbacks. Okay, uh, the client the client actually began construction on on some of this, and I'll just point this out here. This is the actual property. You can go on Google Earth. This was just stripped from Google Earth. Um, this garage that exists here. It does not dominate the site. The, the actual house dominates the site. The house is still the primary residence or, or, or building on this property. As you can see here, the client did go ahead and uh, make started renovation based on the permit that was reviewed and issued. And this construction started shortly after the permit was issued. So they started construction just about in August. And I'm trying to set the timeline here. The permit was approved in June. July, August went, they started construction in August. And then of course the permit was then revoked in September. I do wanna just show a real quick clip here. It's about, it's about a two minute video, just showing do that work has already begun, had already begun on this property. This is inside the property. Work had already begun. The clients were not issued a stop work order because they were doing work illegally. They went through the actual process 
to make sure that it was done well. They hired a contractor that is local to Hamilton. And whether this has any bearing or not, it is bringing revenue into the city of Hamilton by bringing work to contractors, right? Uh, I just wanted to point that out. I, I think everyone had a good chance to look at that. And with that said, um, there were some other comments concerning the, the, the plan, the official plan. So the official plan does actually allow for these semi-detached uh, single families, for these duplex, triplex, fourplexes, as well as, uh, as SDUs and SDUDs. So there was, there was an ambiguous comment in there that I, I was not familiar with at all until I saw the comments regarding some sort of archaeological matter. I, I was not aware of that. And I, I, I would have been, I would have appreciated if the city at the time had brought that to the client's attention, but that was not brought to the client's attention. But I want to state here that outside of the variances that are being requested, um, this property, had it been existing, lawfully existing, we would not even be having this meeting today. So all we're asking for is that the variances that are being requested, that they be approved. I do believe that they're minor in nature as they do not they, they do not sort of hinder any of the surrounding properties or neighbors. And as I said, if this was an, a lawfully existing property, we would not be here today because the building as it exists today would be allowed to be converted into a secondary dwelling unit detached. That is as it exists today. This is, uh, and planning, zoning, uh, the permits were approved. I did not stamp these drawings myself. These drawings were stamped by the building department, right? They were stamped by the building department. I did not approve these myself. I had to go through the process on behalf of the client, right? And this is allowed in this CS 18022s sorry, 1822 zone that this property is located in. And so I just wanted to bring this, this, uh, this, this is, is, is the point that I wanted to make on this particular case here. And I'm certainly open to answering any questions, any further questions. Okay, at this time, I'm gonna ask the committee if they have any questions, I'll start with Vern. I have a couple of comments. First of all, when I visited this site, there is no indication of an application on the front of the property. Usually I look for that piece of paper to help me identify where the application is coming from, and then I go and take a look at it. Second thing I noticed, and I noticed this again when we just look at the shared screen here, is some pictures of this, of this garage, which is referred to as a secondary dwelling unit, which I think is false. Um, I didn't see the order to comply on the front of that garage. There is an order to comply, and I read that today. And uh, apparently there, there was some work done here without the proper, to, proper permits, and that's the reason that it's in order to comply. The next thing I looked at, there's uh, three hydrometers on the side of the building. And if we have three hydrometers on there, let's say one isn't in use, then this application is not for a secondary dwelling unit, it's for a third dwelling unit on the property. So I think this thing is, what they're asking for is completely without, without reason. The, uh, there's also the start of a driveway on one side of the property and the curb is not even cut out for an access to a driveway. And it looks like it's been sitting there some time um, with the grass or the weeds growing up through the gravel. It look, doesn't look like it's been maintained. It just looks like it, it looks like it's a thought that's never been finished. And when I looked at, at the proposed secondary dwelling unit, I don't know how they're planning on putting the electricity into this thing. And like I said, I don't think it's secondary. I think it's third dairy, if anything. There is three hydrometers on the side of the existing house. 
The 200 amp service that feeds this has a, has a room, has room for a fourth electric meter on there. And there's another 200 meter base on the property, on the side of the house with no meter on it. Everything about this application doesn't sit well with me. And I'm gonna leave it at that. If I was asked for a motion, I'm prepared to give one. Nancy. Thank you. And thank you for some of those comments, uh, Laverne. I have similar comments. I do question though, the work you said was being done while one thought the permit was in place for the construction when the property did not close until the end of September. This notice came out in the middle of September and they were not even the owners at that time. Number two, um, my colleague refers to a third unit. There's currently one unit being rented right now on the MLS and that is the upper floor of the raised ranch. So that then there indicates a top floor unit, a bottom unit, and the proposed secondary dwelling unit. You spoke about council's discussion about secondary dwelling units. Secondary dwelling units are permitted in the rear of an existing single family home residential. This is a side yard, albeit it is on a very strange court. But again, with that third driveway being pushed over to the side as a let's hope that we can get it done. Um, and I understand all that parking isn't necessarily necessary, along with the lack of the seven meter setback, along with the lack of respect for the neighbor on the south side where the garage abuts the fence almost on top of it. I do not see any possibility for this thing to be approved. No. Yes, uh, I visit the property myself and I agree with our, my colleagues here exactly everything I saw was the same thing and uh, uh, the garage, I'm told the garage or secondary yield, uh, unit is sticking out way farther than what the main house is so uh, I'm not in uh, favor of it. Any more comments or a motion? Yeah, just quickly, um, what is the square footage of this garage and what is the square footage of the ground floor of your house? Yeah, should it share to, to the member? Um, so the garage represents 65% of the actual ground I floor. The prevent, what is the square footage? The square footage is noted right here on screen. It's 1,023 square feet. And the garage or the proposed secondary dwelling unit detached 661 square feet so as you can see that does comply with what is required by the bylaw today right as i said before this here is just a situation where the current owners was not aware and nor did the city make it make it a, a, a planning or building department brought it to our attention that the garage was not actually built lawfully, and hence the reason why we're here today. The variants that have been requested are minor in nature and would have been approved without us being here today had, had that been true. Any question? Sorry, Dale, um, uh, you have a question? Mark's microphone's just off. <laughs> Yes, uh, so this is a, a really good prime example of, of the due diligence of the committee and, and researching as much as they can as to what has happened in the past and what's going on in the present. And so at this point in time, uh, I would like to make a motion to deny the application. Okay, I'll accept that motion. Is there a seconder? Nancy, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous application denied. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. Okay, hearings adjourned. All right, and we're all set for let me get back in order. Uh, GLB 22135 and GLA 22414 for 9662 20 Road West in Glanbrook. We have the agent registered to speak and no other interested parties. Applicant's name for the record, please. Uh, the applicant's not here today. 
Uh, my name is Liam Doherty I'm with AJ Clark and Associates. I'm acting as agent for the applicant. Okay. Are there interested parties? Did you wish to speak? I do. Um, I can start. I would like to pass out a diagram I made. No, sorry. Uh, you have to have pre prepared them in advance, or you can share your screen to present them virtually. Uh, can I hold them up? Uh, no, because the uh, those attending virtually aren't able to see them. Can you articulate it verbally? I'll have to. If, okay. you, if, you, if it's a drawing that you had submitted previously, either through the application or through the um, con comment package, then uh, mm -hmm. I can share it on screen. It's a new technology. I know. <laughs> um, all right, I'll, I'll try and speak then. Okay, uh, there were a lot of staff comments. I read through them and obviously I don't agree with all of them. Um, it does seem like different parts of the comments were written by different people in different departments, and sometimes they don't always agree. So I'll, I'll try and make sense of them all and explain what our position is and why we want, we think we should go forward. Um, uh, first off, the staff report on their severances agree that the design and the layout meets the intent of the official plans. Obviously, I agree. Um, we looked at the official plan and the secondary plan policies for the area. We looked at the approved uh, development surrounding the parcel. I feel that what we have brought forward makes the most sense in this context. The official plan calls, the secondary plan call for urban residential development. And we're providing that. The policies ask for ground-oriented housing with a density between two and 22 units per hectare. We're providing detached homes, the density of about 14 units per net hectare. We're meeting what the, what the policy is asking for exactly. Um, I, I, I was, my next part was referring to the diagram, so I will speak about it and hopefully describe it. There were some questions about in, a statement that we're impacting the, the streetscape of you know, Silver Birch Boulevard with these you know, five houses. And when I look at what's there now and what's been approved and being built, I disagree. On the east side of the property, there are two severances that have been approved in that property. So making uh, two 22 meter wide lots fronting onto 20 road. To the north of us, we have a row of 12 meter wide, 30, 35 meter deep, deep residential lots for detached housing. Uh, to the west of us, I'm sorry, they're not showing on that graphic. Uh, along 20 Road, there's been a lot of uh, redevelopment. There are some smaller lots fronting onto 20 Road that have been approved. And directly across from us, all along the west side of Silver Birch, is a row of six meter wide townhouses whose front doors facing onto Silver Birch and they're driveways at the rear. So in terms of the streetscape, bringing in 15 meter wide lots that are 46 meters, meters deep, fits in quite nicely with that context. We have the very dense townhouses to the, to the west of us, and sort of the somewhat larger lots to the east of us. And so I believe we're making a very positive contribution here. So when you look at the recommendations by staff, they, again, they say that the severances themselves, the lot layout meets the intent of the official plan and they recommend approval with a rezoning and they're against the variances. And when I look at that, I am not sure what it is they're trying to achieve through making us go through a rezoning process that we're not doing through the conditions uh, the variances and the severance conditions. Um, again, going back to the intent of the official plan and secondary plan, um, they want low density housing, we're providing that. Uh, in fact, the secondary plan states, the rear portion of the existing large lot residential development 
fronting 20 Road West shall be encouraged to be redeve redeveloped. We are doing that. Um, when it comes to the intent of the zoning bylaw, it's a bit more hard, harder to decipher because it's not stated like it is in the official plan. So we have to look at the, the bylaw itself and its history. The ER zone here is not a prohibition on new development. It was brought in as a control for semi-rural areas of Glanbrook that at the time did not have proper servicing and did not have proper stormwater management. As if any are familiar with this area, stormwater management is a major issue and it has to be addressed no matter what you do. However, if you look at what's going on along 20 Road, especially to the west, you have a lot of new smaller lots coming in. Um, the smaller lots are permitted when they make sense. I mean, sometimes they were done through rezoning and some of them were do, done through minor variances. I know I did a couple of them, couple of them myself. Um, the, uh, sorry. Yes, because again, smaller lots are permitted where they make sense. The city itself is making changes to the ER zones in Glanbrook. This past August, they passed a, uh, 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 sorry, a change to the ER zoning in Glanbrook on areas that are outside of secondary plan areas. This, this, this change passed, passed last August now permits in the ER zone uh, semis, duplexes, and townhouses with the provisions for those uh, uses according to their own uh, categories within the, the greater zoning bylaw. So the areas outside of the secondary plan areas are allowed smaller lots, denser units than what we're uh, providing. And if you go back to the uh, staff report uh, for that change, they stated that they wanted, they did it as a compliance exercise with the new legislation, and they intend to do that with the area, the ER zones within the, second, the secondary plan areas, but because it had been through a public process in consultation, it was going to take a longer time to get to them. And they, at the time, stated that they're hoping to address the ER zones within the secondary plan area sometime in late 2023. So in that context, what we're proposing fits in with the intent of the zoning bylaw. It fits with the intent of what the city wants and is changing the area. And the purposes of the rezoning bylaw process will be met through the uh, minor variance pro uh, conditions. Uh, for example, we'll be required to do a noise report. We'll be required to do archeology. span required to do grading design. And most importantly, and very clearly, will be required to design and construct and get approved septic and stormwater systems to connect with, this, with the rest of the, of the network. That will be done at the expense of the applicant. And if we can't do it, if we can't provide housing that is connected to the sewer and septic network, we will, won't be permitted to proceed so I don't understand why we would go through a rezoning process when the purpose of that process is being met by this process. Um, so in summary, we have before you an application for development that is desirable to the neighborhood. It fulfills the intent of the official plan and the secondary plan. And the variances, though, large compared to the older ER zone are minor compared in, in context of what the city is intending for the ER zone and for this zoning in the future as it brings this older Glanbrook zoning into the 0500 uh, zone. So and, and, and I am asking you to support the applications and vote for their approval. And if we can't su support the variances, I'm asking you to vote for approval for the severances and with the condition that we go through the rezoning process. Thank you. Committee. Go ahead. 
Yes, I was looking at the servicing because, of course, there is none on um, Silver Birch. Uh, the Development Engineering Department uh, suggests that these lands were not included in um, the design for the sewer and water, most of the sewer, Correct. Uh, the sewer on White Rock Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, prior to approving a severance, they want confirmation that um, the services will be adequate and they can be constructed. So it seems a little um, premature to be approving severances if the services cannot be constructed. Um, the other thing is, is the existing house, is it still there? Correct, it is. It's on septic? I believe it is, yes. So the services, the um, septic system will have to be decommissioned and I notice that that is not one of the conditions that's listed. So those, are my comments on that. Um, yeah. okay, thank you. I can just respond to the condition with regards to the septic system. So there is a condition, condition seven is related to the uh, existing septic system uh, would comply so if there wasn't. Um, applicant. Uh, through you, uh, Chair. Um, well, the condition actually states that we have to verify that it meets the zo uh, setbacks and whatnot, which is not what our intent. Our intent is to have it decommissioned and to have every home there serviced by septic and uh, storm sewers. And also I know that the neighboring uh, severances to the east of us, the two of them, have all a similar condition on their approval that they get uh, in, uh, connection to the uh, sewer systems. And we know that because they've been in contact with this applicant hoping to work together and create a single design and project to connect all the homes to the network. And again, the condition will be that we get approval for such. So if we create designs that don't meet the numbers, don't meet the rationale, then the design doesn't get approved and we don't have final approval of the severances. The advantage for us uh, having the severances approved allows us to go through the rezoning process uh, differently than if we were doing a rezoning process fresh by ourselves uh, without a my, uh, committee of adjustment decision on severances. Makes sense. Tom? Uh, there was mention of uh, this houses along uh, Silver Birch opposite these properties. I just reading the staff comments, I, I assume that they're part of the subdivision that's mentioned there. They're a draft plan of subdivision. Presumably for a draft plan of subdivision, they would have to have the appropriate zoning. So why should your properties be any, any different? Um, well, they were part of a much larger process, larger subdivision. Um, and they also went through an official plan amendment uh, because their uh, density was 42 hectare, uh, uh, units per hectare. Uh, and again, we're at 14. Um, and the dwelling type at the time that they went through for was not a permitted use. Uh, 10 houses were not a permitted use. Uh, our our uh, form is permitted. Um, so we don't need uh, variances for that. And when you're looking at smaller developments, uh, they've changed the rezoning process to be quite onerous. Um, and if we go through the minor variances, again, for five dwellings, we still have the same cost in terms of engineering, servicing, design, archaeology, noise reports, and so forth. So, and again, we, we, we are meeting what's already written down. We're meeting the policies of the official plan and the secondary plan. So when they're changing things from the secondary plan, it you know, made sense to do a proper rezoning. In our case, because we're aligned with the secondary plan and it makes sense to go through the variance process. Anyone else? Nancy? We hear this all the time about zoning or putting the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart, whatever it comes down to. My other concern though is with the two variances that are not what I would consider minor. Um, they're quite large. Yes. Um, um, I mean, 
a few feet here and there, we're doing okay. But with the setback, um, such a, a such a big difference, seven meters is quite a huge difference as a, a deficiency. And then what's the other one? The uh, lot coverage, huge, huge difference. 720 meter uh, difference, square meter. Those two are not minor in my mind, so I have some difficulty with that. But you're talking about if we were to ignore the variances and deal only with the severances, you would have to come back and reapply, correct, with all these variances to go in place uh, if the lots were severed? No. If you approve these severances with conditions and don't approve the variances, and when the conditions being we go and get a rezoning, we have to go through the rezoning process. And once we have the rezoning that when our lots comply to the rezoning, we can then register the severances without coming back. Um, if we, uh, if the severances aren't approved with conditions, it's just outright denied, then we have to go through a rezoning process, then come back for mm -hmm. uh, severances. And I believe this is what happened with the previous owners. Yeah. Because this just changed hands in December, I think, right? Uh, no, it was before that. Not too much before, yeah. And again, uh, there is a somewhat different process for rezoning if you're as a condition of a severance by committee of adjustment rather than just a straight rezoning application. Right. Um, and we would much prefer to go through that process. Of course you would. Um, again, we're meeting, meeting all the same requirements, the same amount of studies, uh, the same costs. Um, and we still have to, the big challenge again, is servicing and stormwater control. We still have to meet that. If we can't do it for whatever reason, then we're dead in the water and there's nothing happens. Okay, thanks. Anybody else have a thought? So from what I can understand, you would like us to approve the severances and the variances, but in the alternative, you would like the severances move to be approved and the condition of a zoning change, which might address that as the yes. alternative. And then the third, both denied, is obviously what you don't want. Yes. <laughs> and there are a few of the conditions which I, we're going this the second route that I would want to have changed or at least modified because I don't think they make sense in this context. Okay, well, tell us what you would like from a condition perspective, should there be an inclination to bring an application for approval of the severances? Of uh, okay. Um, there's the uh, spatial separation compliance, which I don't understand why we would need that, but that's not, not, that's not a make or break condition. Um, the submit survey evidence showing that our existing septic system complies with the clearance requirements uh, for their lands re severed and or retained doesn't make sense because the only way we go forward is, is on septic sewer and storm sewer. So if we don't have septic sewer and storm sewer, we can't proceed. And if you wish to make that a condition of approval, we accept that fully. Um, what about revising that to instead of doing the spatial separation requiring that the existing septic system be decommissioned? Absolutely. Um, and there was also a requirement that the existing home be demolished. I don't know why we want to retain the home um, and have it continue as a home. Um, so I would like that to be struck. And yeah, we agree with the archaeology, noise report, report sure, um, tree management, um, sure. Um, those are the only ones we want to have uh, changed. So I'm taking it from a demolition permit point of view, that would come after you potentially have to get your zoning changed and you start development. Correct. Another question, if you get a demolition permit, does that mean you have to demolition right away? Can you get a permit and then hold off? But I'm not sure. Because you're going to have to de demolish it anyways at some point. The home or the septic system? No, the home. Why is that? Unless you're going to keep the home on one of the lots. That is the intent. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. 
Makes perfect sense. Okay, so that's number 50. All right, so for clarity, the request is for the consent that condition seven be amended to be uh, the septic system be decommissioned uh, with clearance requirements from the OBC and the building department and condition 13 to remain and condition 15 to be removed. 13 was for the zoning bylaw amendment. Okay. Yep. Maggie? Um, just wondering if maybe this is a little premature considering uh, the amount of work that has to be done. And I know that severances are now two years, but having worked in this field for some time, <laughs> doing uh, the, the um, investigation for the engineering, getting permits and uh, can, um, agreements in place, uh, that can take a long time. So would it not be maybe better to hold off on getting this approved in case you have to come back and reapply. I spoke with the applicants this morning and they wish to definitely proceed now. Uh, they understand the challenges ahead. Um, they also know that if they have the severances conditionally approved, it allows for financing and agreements to go forward and do the work for engineering. Um, they understand that there are risks, uh, absolutely. I've been involved in some of the other projects in the area. I know stormwater is a major issue. I know septic capacity is a major issue and that there are no guarantees. And we've made that abundantly clear to them uh, what the situation is. And um, the way they are progressing, they wish to uh, have the variances at least conditionally approved now so they can proceed with the rest of the work. And yeah, that makes sense because um, when you do bring a zoning change, it'll be for it's not for the and also for financing if they're getting financing there's more of an inclination for institutions to give financing if there's some form of okay along the way as opposed to nothing that's not our issue but that's just a reality go ahead one more question was regarding uh, i believe it was engineering or something about the um the swale 1.2 meters for the swale at the side yard. I think hmm. I saw something like that. Is that being taken into consideration? Um, it can be. Um, you can five. add a condition. Normally, side yards are 1.2 meters on either either side to guarantee stormwater flow between homes. Um, you can add a condition, or you know that you know uh, homes can't be within 2.4 meters of each other or 2.4 meters of the existing structure. Um, if you that would make you more comfortable, absolutely. I mean, it's early days for that stuff, but. Yes, but. Okay, and sorry, that wouldn't be able to be cleared before the consent. So it would have to be added to, as a condition to the minor variance. Uh, if, if this prop, if the property were rezoned to whatever it has to be rezoned for, would these lots comply with that zone? Uh, yes, um, hundred percent. Well, if you rezone it to a different zone, then it complies with the zone you've rezoned it to. Um, sure. And I know that you know our lots are wider than what's approved across the road. Uh, they're bigger. Um, we're larger lots than what's to the north of us. Um, I mean, these are 46 meters deep. Oh, yeah, they are larger than Yeah. Okay. Um, does anyone have a courage to make a motion? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make a motion for approval of the severances as amended, but not the variances. So we'll just need a separate motion then what you would like to do with the variances or you can, we can deal can with the consent the first. On the, on the severance then. right now. Okay, we'll just deal with uh, the severance. So a motion is on the table um, that the consent application be approved as amended as previously Yeah, with discussed. seven, 13 and 15. Seconder, Nancy, all in favor? Here. Opposed? Carried. Seeing none, okay. And I take a motion for the variance application. 
Is there anything on it that could be as opposed to just a flat out denial of everything on it? Um, Sometimes there's one or two that are okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just wondering that. about the existing house. Now, the existing house is going to be demolished at some point. No. Is that no, it's gonna not going it. to be demolished? Yeah. In that case, you do for that one, you would need um, a variance yeah. for the side. So you have to come back for variances, anyways. Yeah. Or it may all be able to be dealt with through the zoning bylaw amendment as that was a condition of the approval. Site specific zoning. So do we have to um, deny the variances or just table the variances? Yeah. Would you like us to table that, the variances? Yes. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. Okay. And you get a handshake with the kiss. It's pretty good. <laughs> Motion for tabling the variance application. Oh, yep. <laughs> All in favor? Here. Here. Thank you for your time. And then was a lot to go over. All right, tomorrow, I'll start for the next file. We're hearing GLB 2239 for 91 Strathern Place in Glanbrook. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Agent available. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is. the record, please. Uh, my name is Jacob Dickey. Uh, I'm from Urban and Mine Planning Consultants. And yes, I'm acting as the agent on behalf of the owners. Okay, did you read the comments that were posted? I did. Uh, I did see the comments uh, and I agree with staff. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's just a condition being added to a uh, conditional approval uh, that was issued for a severance in June 2022. So this is pretty straightforward. Okay, questions from the committee? Move it. Move it. Mel, seconder. Nancy, all in favor? Here. None. None. Harry. Thank you. And just for the record, that was um, previously conditionally approved. And so the motion was to add an additional condition to the previously granted conditional approval. Thank you. All right, and we're all set for the next file. We're hearing ANA 22415 for 312 Maple Dean Drive in Ancaster. We have the agent registered to speak and nobody in person, or sorry, and no red interested parties. <laughs> agent available. Chanel Torres Smith there. So if the agents or owners for 315 Maple Dean Drive are here, please make yourself known. Hi, I'm the owner, Siobhan Hamilton. Okay. Are you prepared to uh, proceed with us asking you questions on this? I can attempt, yes, at my best. Okay, did you read the comments that were posted? I did, yes. Okay, committee have any questions? Mel, or Vern, sorry, you both did. This is Mel. No, he put his hand up too, so. <laughs> Planning seems favorable, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, seconder, Mel, all in favor? Here. Opposed, Dale, none. Okay, carried, you're approved. Thank you. All right, and we're all set for the next file. We're hearing ANA 22232 for 60 Academy Street in Ancaster. We have the owners registered to speak um, or and an agent. Um, whoever is speaking on behalf of the file, please make yourself known. Okay. Uh, applicant or agent available? Where are you? There you are. Okay, name for the record, please. Sorry, are you speaking for 60 Academy? Or my wife will be first, and then yes. Okay. Okay, I see Nicole Todd up there. Yes, and I'm Sean Todd. Is she the boss or you? Well, we're going to go with her. She's online, so we're going to go with her for now. Okay, you've read the comments that were uh, posted? Yes. You okay with what you read? Yes, first, I do have. Uh, one of the variances is recommended to be denied, so you either have to 
persuade us to go against staff based on what you say or table it and perhaps try to massage it and bring it back? What's your inclination? Um, I'd like to speak. I'm Nicole Todd. Okay. Virtual here. So hi guys, I'm Nicole Todd. Sean's my husband there. He's there. Um, we, I am the owner as well as our three young, very active children. At the last meeting that we attended on August the 11th, we received comments from planning staff supporting a 1.2 meter side yard setback. And also engineering comments were also supportive. The comments though indicated that we should submit a site plan application to confirm other variances were not needed. We also heard from one of our neighbors who had a concern with the placement of our new garage blocking a window at the side of her home. So after the 11th, August the 11th meeting, it was tabled and uh, we redesigned the home to take into account where her window is. In doing so, the new garage was set back further, and so we adjusted where the back of the home was going to be to accommodate for the lost space that was originally designed at the front of the house. However, we also reduced the size of the, size of the proposed new home by 300 square feet to ensure we were keeping a good sized backyard, which is actually why we purchased this house over like 10 years ago. Um, our children are very, very active and with the three of them, as well as the dog wanting to be outside all the time, the priority is to have a large backyard. And so as well, we asked for an additional 0.2 meters more on the side yard to give additional space to our garage. The current garage has the same, if not a smaller side yard setback than the proposed one. After looking into the site plan application, we found out that it was no longer required as of November 28th. And so we had thought this application would be supported because we addressed the neighbor and a site plan application is no longer needed which was the recommendation by the staff was solely to submit just the site plan application for review. If you haven't seen the original comments, Sean, my husband who's there with you right now, has them for you to see from the August 11th meeting. Now we see the staff comments for this committee meeting that they do not support the minor variance number one. I have only to assume that it's because of the specified 1.0 side yard, similar to what we currently have with our current garage, rather than the previous 1.2 meter side yard that was proposed August 11th. If it will allow us to have approval from the committee, we will redesign to go back to a 1.2 meter side yard, which was previously supported by the staff and the engineering had no comments with the proposed minor vari variance application. I guess that's possible or rate right between 1.1. 1. 1. Any comments from the committee? We have David. Yeah, we'll we'll actually point to a meter make that big of a difference. No. No. I uh, make a motion for approval. Okay. Seconder. No, no second. All in favor? Here. Opposed? Approved at 1.2. No, it's approved oh, at no. 1. 1. 1.1? 1. 1. 1. Yeah. No, he said 1. Okay. He said just one as approved as written that's on one. the notice. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, that's what I meant. No longer the 1.2. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So you're at the one. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Got confused. All right. And we're all set for the next file. We're hearing ANA 2301 for 262 Springbrook Avenue in Ancaster. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the agent for 262 Springbrook Avenue. Can I share my screen? Sure. I'm sorry, we barely hear you. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to share my screen. Okay. If that's Are there any interested parties on this one? No. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, this is. This is 262 Springbrook Avenue, um, the subject property. And as you can see, right in the backyard, facing the backyard, there is a large water body. And we are proposing a deck here. Now, uh, which doesn't comply with the rear yard setback. But as you can see, most of the neighbors have already built similar decks or are planning to build it. 
Uh, if there's a large water body here, uh, we see in future the remaining neighbors would also uh, tend to do the same. And so these are some of the examples. And this is what we are proposing basically. So uh, I also read some comments uh, from the city staff and we agree with uh, all the other comments. Uh, there is one comment where they said a roof is not permitted over the deck. So uh, I would like to request if, uh, if we are allowed to build a roof, sorry, here. So this is our proposal, a very similar deck to what the other neighbors have done. I would like to um, permit us a roof over the deck or uh, if this is considered as a balcony and then a uh, roof could be allowed, then I would like to get a permission for 0.47%, uh, uh, sorry, 47% uh, lot coverage instead of the existing permitted 45%. So either, either you allow the roof over the deck or uh, you can grant us a 47% lot coverage. Okay, what's the committee think? It backs onto a swamp. So the only concern would be mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> David? Yeah, I don't have a problem with improving this variance. It's staff is in support, I'm, I'm good with it. Make a motion okay. for support. Motion for approval, seconder. Burn, all in favor? Opposed? You're approved. Thank you so much. Uh, the next, I'm also the agent for the next application. Okay, just a minute, please. Yeah. Sorry, for clarity, was that a motion for uh, 262 Springbrook as amended with a Roof, or was it just as written on the variances? I thought it was roofed over with the variances. Okay, so a minimum rear setback shall be provided for a roofed over yeah. deck? Okay. Yeah. So I thought it was a set of brackets. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, Application we're approved, hearing adjourned. All right, Thank and you. we're all set for the next file. We're hearing HMA 2304 for 769 King Street West in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak as well as one interested party. We do have staff wishing to speak first on this file. So you can just sit at the table and when it's your turn, we'll call Are you the you. applicant or the interested party? No, you are the applicant? No, no, no. Okay, and just we'll speak that. Okay, who's the applicant on this? I'm the applicant for this file as well. Okay. I did notice I was driving to West Hamilton yesterday, pulled up to the light, and I saw the sign right there, and I could read it from the car. I thought it's just sure. perfect, put it perfect. I'm actually reading it. Okay, so there was a notice. Okay, uh, sir, would you like the interested party and staff to speak first, and then you can respond to their concerns? Sure, yeah. Okay, uh, should we speak to staff first? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Staff, uh, Joe, I believe, wishes to speak on this matter. Uh, yeah, just through the chair, uh, as per zoning comments um, related to the first variance, um, staff would have no issue with the reduction in parking from four to three, and we would um, remove the condition we put on the application. So uh, just an update from zoning comments, and staff have no issue. Did everyone get that? <laughs> No. Yeah. Uh, can so you hear me? I, I can repeat it. So uh, uh, Joe mentioned that per zoning comments, they revised the variance request from seven parking spaces to four as being required. And due to that, yeah, and then further uh, is being reduced with the variance request for three. And so they are, uh, planning staff is satisfied with the revision and uh, are requesting to remove their condition. Okay. Right? Sorry, I have a comment. Is this regarding okay. 769 King Street West? Hang on, yes, sir. We're going to ask it. everyone first, and you can respond to everyone at once instead of back and forth. We don't like the ping pong table approach here. <laughs> okay, ma'am, can I have your name and address for the record? You'll just need to make sure that your microphone is turned on. The white. Is it on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Name and address, please. Uh, Silvana Lopez. 
767 King West. Okay, and your concern or which anything you would uh, say? Not so much concern. I, I'd like to see the project uh, obviously move forward. It's been sitting for a long time. Um, I just wanted uh, the committee to realize that it had been operated as a business for the last 10 years, uh, two businesses there, um, and the parking was being used, obviously not legally, but there was enough parking. So, you know, when you're looking at the paper, it looks like there's just gravel there, but it's paved driveway that maybe is not legal. Okay. So I would like to see the project uh, come to an end. Got it. Hey, thank you very much. No problem. Applicant, you can respond to the staff committee and this young lady's comments, and then the committee will ask questions thereafter. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the reason I had to interrupt earlier is because we are applying for the variance in the setback. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of any parking uh, requirement, but uh, if, if that's the case, then um, can, I, can I share my screen again? Sure. So the variances were noted on the notice that was provided. They were also noted in the comment package that was provided. Okay. So... Uh, for the King Street West, uh, this is the existing property. The variance we requested uh, is for the front uh, setback for the proposed porch. So this property, uh, originally, it was a residential property with, uh, with this kind of a, sorry, with, with a porch coming out. So th there was a porch originally here uh, prior to 1998. For many, many decades, this was a existing building uh, with a porch and five steps in the front. And then in 1998, the previous owner uh, proposed to uh, demolish the porch and then they built a porch similar to this. And uh, this is existing currently at the property. And then uh, they took back the porch and the steps and now that the new owner purchased the property, they want to conduct a, a medical clinic here. They want, they really like the original house design and they want to bring back that original design with the porch and five steps. Uh, now that original design did not really meet the bylaw requirement for front yard uh, setback. And that's why we are applying for the variance. Now, in terms of the parking, uh, this property currently has a back alley and then there is a, an access aisle here and a, a paved parking space here. So we are not making, we are not proposing any changes to the parking. You can definitely see the 50% greenscape there. Anyone? Yeah. Just want to double check on the zoning comment. And of course, as the neighbor alluded to, it was a single family home, but it's been operating as a business. I just want to make sure that the use that's proposed is a permitted use. And staff respond to that? Through the chair, if it's not um, a variance, I would assume it's a permitted use. That would be zoning uh, to speak to, but um, I don't believe they're on the call. They have to get a license anyway, so if we approve for what they're doing and then they want to put in a medical, I think it would be based on what I've seen. It's you have law offices in there and yeah. Jim Orm was in there. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion for approval um, as per... Amen. That change for parking and seven to four and three of four, right? Yep. Okay. Second, Vern? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Here. Opposed? Sorry. You're in favor? Okay. I just wonder why they can't squeeze a fourth parking spot in there. Uh, once something's built and people squeeze what they can, but on paper it's three. <laughs> I have one and doctor's office tends to be not so bad for parking. They're not like uh, other things. Okay, application approved, hearing adjourned. Thank you so much.
Okay, and we did have a break currently scheduled. I, it was scheduled for 15 minutes. I would like to request at least five minutes from the committee. Sure, I want to get a cookie, so yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, uh, so the meeting uh, will recess and we will reconvene at three o'clock.
All right, uh, it is three o'clock, so we will proceed with the next item. So we are hearing SCA 22412 for 185 Gray Road in Stony Creek. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, I know the applicant's here because I've seen his face all day long. Are you ready to speak? <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. Should I take it as a compliment? Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I've spoken to the owner, and since staff has recommended denial of this, of uh, the first variance, we are going to like to table this if possible and discuss the variance with staff to reduce the variance that's required in order staff can support this. Okay, motion for tabling. Mel seconded. Nancy, all in favor? Opposed, none. Carried. Thank you. All right, we are all set for the next file. We're hearing HMA 2303 for 8 Clare Avenue in Hamilton. We have the owner registered to speak and no other interested parties. Applicant's name for the record, please. Is the applicant there? Mr. Redding? Uh, he may be attending in person. Oh, we don't Thank currently you. see him on the call. Mr. Redding? Yes. Okay, Grab please a come seat. to the table and make sure that your microphone is turned on when you're speaking. Yep, any one of those, and then you press the button there so the red light comes on. Name for the record, sir. Pete Redding. Okay, did you read the comments that were posted? I did. And anything you wish to say, are you happy with, well, oh. actually, Minor, they're one and two, they're suggesting are denied through development. Do you yes. want to speak to that and try to persuade us I that do. I did okay? notice a couple of mistakes. Okay, go ahead. Um, one of them was on the actual map. Um, I purchased uh, half of a lot about 2017 with my neighbor. He bought the other half. And it shows as a blank spot on the, the map here. So where, where it says eight, it, you see 16 right beside it. It's a wider lot. And then there's a little gap between, right? I own that little gap. That's where I want to put this proposed garage. And um, then 1.7 meters to 4.5, I think it was. Um, I'd like to make it as wide as I can, and I have about 20 feet to play with. So, okay, if, I go well, 1. if you 7, noticed, engineering commented on issues concerning the drainage, et cetera, right. and don't suggest that this get approved. Right. Did you want to try to suggest to us that it's okay, or do you want to defer, speak to engineering, and perhaps get them to understand um, what your situation is so we don't have a negative comment in front of us when we make right. a decision? Right. Um, I don't think there's going to be a drainage issue, really, to be honest. Um, so I'm not I'm not digging down really. It's just going to be a pad, like a floating pad. Yeah. Now we could believe you, and I probably do, but okay. we have to kind of rely on the engineers. Yeah. Unless somehow you can persuade them. Right. And then they back off on their comments, and then we could go ahead and okay. approve it on that basis. But if you're just suggesting that we make a decision now because you think it's not a problem and it gets turned right. down, then you'd have to reapply and right, right. over again. So you might want to look into that or see yeah. if something could be structured. Yeah. Or we could approve it conditional upon satisfaction of the engineering department, okay. and then you can talk to the map. Okay. The other issue is in some areas, engineering says that minimum is 0 0.9, should be 0 0.9 meters. Uh, he's 0.46. I, I'm not quite sure why you need a five and a half foot garage. I think Maggie knows. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I just wanted to mention about the fact that normally they ask for a point nine. Um, they're very concerned about drainage and um, flooding in the beach community, okay. and which is why they insist on a 1.7 meter side yard. So I think that 
I would not be in favour of approving it as is without a positive comment from engineering. So I would suggest that you might want to table That's it to have feet feet a discussion. Yeah, so if we table it, okay. you don't have to reapply. You can right. speak to engineering, try to satisfy okay. them. If they soften their comments, then you put it right. on the next agenda, and then we see you again and hopefully okay. approve it. Okay. Okay, motion for tabling. Seconder, all in favor? Okay, so speak to the engineering. Okay. Try to come up with something to convince them okay. that what you're doing is going to work. Right. If they and, are on side, then put it back on. And yes. If and, from, and, they're still not on side, you can still come in and try to get us to approve it despite they don't. But right. then you might want to bring some ammo in something <laughs> to say something other than you. Okay, I did okay. notice on the rear one too that they wrote down six meters. It's actually 4.5 from what I... Yeah, okay, well, you can fix that all up, but it's tabled you for know. now. You don't have to reapply, okay. and hopefully we'll see you in the near future. Fair enough. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you very much. All right, and we're all set for the next file. So we're hearing HMA 2305 for 99 Augusta Street in Hamilton. Wait, hold on. How about Greenford? Yep. Oh, there we go. That's why I'm not holding my pages in order. All right, <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, once a year is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are not hearing uh, HMA 2305. We are hearing HMA 2306 for 49 Greenford Drive in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak as well as one interested party. Okay, is Mr. Ms. Raja available? The applicant, the agent? Yes, yes I'm here, Mother Raja. Okay, um, you've read the comments. You can see there are some concerns with some of the variances and some negative comments. Is it your inclination to proceed based on what we have here or were you inclined to potentially table to try to rectify or massage some of these issues and then bring it back at another time? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, like we are talking about 162 Humphrey, right? is not the other meeting, other project 49 Greenford Drive. No, we are hearing HMA 2306 for 49 Greenford Drive. Oh, 49 Greenford Drive, yeah, okay. Uh, yes, uh, I have gone to the comments, uh, like all are good. I think we don't need to go in discussion, but there are some um, corrections uh, that, that might need, those comments might need to be amended. So can we go one by one? Okay, I'm a little confused, sir. Uh, the comments that I read see that variances one, three, and five are okay, but two, four, and seven should be denied. So yeah. if you're gonna proceed, you're gonna have to convince us why they should be approved. Uh, yeah, sure, like I can tell you, okay, one is approved, that is good. And the second one, uh, which is not being supported by the city staff, I think they have um, misunderstood, I believe, or they are believing on the older older drawings or um, or the Google snapshots because there is no swimming pool anymore there on site. And uh, I have not shown in my drawing as well. So there will be enough landscape in between the second dwelling and the lot line so there will be uh, i think the variance too i i could not understand well like why it is there but we have enough landscape strip so it need to be rephrased or amend accordingly okay so you're saying that you believe you can meet that so you're no longer requiring that as a variance I'm saying that there is a, this says that like there, there must be a visual buffer or vegetation between the side line and the secondary dwelling unit. And we do have uh, a lot of space there. So why it is not being supported, I don't understand that. So okay. if you go to my site plan, if you see the drawings, you Let will see enough space. Uh, it is. It says 11.87, not eight, uh, no, no, this says 7.9 meters we have, which is 26 feet almost. So where they are referring to. OK, 
Okay, did you want to say anything about variants four and seven that is recommended for being denied? Uh, four and seven, yeah, let's see, four. Four is, yeah, four is one meter unobstructed path leading from the street to the entrance of the second unit. Uh, we have not shown the path in the drawing and we, we are assuming, we do have intention to provide that entrance uh, from the driveway. Driveway is enough wide, right? Five meter now, which is 16 feet. So we can provide entrance to the second unit here, right from the corner in front of the garage door. So we do have intention to do that. Okay. Right, these need to be amended as well. And, uh, the next is seven is not being supported. It, it is again the same thing, uh, same. They are asking about the landscape area in between the side lot, lot line and the dwelling unit, the backyard of the house. Uh, we do have more than 12 square meter there because there is swimming, there is no swimming pool anymore. So, that that need to be amended as well accordingly. Okay, when it comes to appropriate time, if there is an inclination for a motion, it will be for not for seven and for four, but we have interested parties yeah. here. Sorry, they're uh, for a different file. We oh. have um, on this file, we have Tony Estabrooks. Estabrooks, I Okay, and the gentleman that wrote the letter. Are you on the grid there, Tony? I am. Okay. Uh, what would you, more would you like to say other than what you had already written in your letter, which we have in front of us? Okay, so I had a question about uh, the, it says it's zoned for D, their application is for D, but the urban um, Hamilton plan says that it's E. So I'm concerned about, is, is that just an uh, error? So the official plan is a document and the zoning bylaw is a document. Okay. So the original document that was sent out to us with the public notice says that it's zoned as D. But on the um, planning and development paperwork that we got online for the meeting today says that it's schedule it's showing to be a schedule E. I guess my concern goes back to the concern of if a zoning is changed what are the implications going to be for the rest of the neighborhood? Because the infrastructure just can't hold that. Well, actually, this isn't for a zoning change. Okay. Where No matter what the zoning is, they're looking for this particular one spot based on their application to be amended. It doesn't change the zoning. It allows them to be permitted despite what the zoning okay. says. We understand that then. Um, there is also a concern that there is a a, this will be actually a third building. There is a completely detached garage or what seems to be used as a garage building. Um, the approximate size is 21 by 13, which would make it seven or sorry, 273 square feet. So now they're looking for a third building or are they looking to take down that garage? I'm sure the applicant will respond to that after you're completed and then we'll allow them its opportunity to respond to your questions and say anything else they want before the committee asks questions. Okay. Do you have any other concerns? And then I'll ask the applicant to answer your questions. Uh, those were just the other things that um, were brought back up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant, would you like to respond to what you've heard? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, this application is not to uh, demolish the garage. This is a, this is for us additional residential dwelling in the backyard. So instead of having us uh, one more separate building for the additional dwelling unit, we have plans to incorporate that uh, existing garage um, into that. So it's gonna be one nice looking one building, not one block of uh, building, not like uh, mushroom growth. 
Okay, so, so you're gonna work around the garage to incorporate it into the secondary that, dwelling. That's okay. true. So we will take a little more area from the backyard and that will be the second unit and above the garage will be a additional unit. So all one block, one unit. Okay. Can I ask you a question on that? Sorry, and we have, uh, so I believe David wished to speak first, then we had Margaret, and then I believe we had somebody else then as well. Have, yes, okay, okay, David. Yeah, I, I don't get a grip on this application here at all. I mean, you're, the applicant's asking for amendments for all these other ones, and he's not too sure what they are. The city has slated their comments on it, and I don't think he understands the fact that you know what the city wants and what he's saying we can we can meet those meet those that means if he if he can meet them that we have no other thing to do except deny two four and seven and let him meet them all and just go ahead and approve one three and yeah, five that could be the possibility i mean that's based or on. it's it, 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 this should have been tabled right from the start the get-go and said listen go back to staff and Go with your evidence and you're going to have the two meet together so they can come back otherwise we're we've we're, we're into this application now and we've heard it so i don't i don't i can't make sense of it sorry okay maggie i have a similar sort of concern with it um there were no uh uh layouts given for the the building I didn't even realize that it was going to be two story. I thought it was just an expansion. Now it looks, now I find out it's going to be a second story on top of the garage. So I wasn't quite sure what we were approving there. So I think that we should table it. Yes. Okay. Nancy, red button. Same thing, actually. I think what I was miss. Uh, confused about or misinformed about is that it's actually for three units. And if that's the case, then the staff's comments about having no buffer between the two units uh, is true because there's no nothing between the accessory proposed and the existing garage. So once again, I'm not in favor of it. Tom? Uh, it seems to me you could only have one secondary unit of the patch. Can you not? I, that seems to be it. And secondly, if he's going to use the garage for other as other than a garage, then there's an issue of parking, which hasn't been dealt with at all. Um, and although that if if if, if the, the driveway isn't used as a driveway, then the the access issue disappears. Seems to me, but we don't know. We quite don't don't quite know how this is going to be worked out. So I think I'd be. Inclined to support a tabling. Okay. Anyone else? No? Yes, I don't think he's. They understand exactly what they they're down here, and I think we should table. And Tom moves it. I'll second it. Okay. So for the benefit of the applicant and the interested party, there's issues here that aren't clear to us. So short of just turning it down, it's probably more prudent to have it tabled to isolate exactly what is going on, have better clarification from staff, then bring it back on another day and potentially at that time it can be approved in whatever form it comes back. On that note, I'll take a motion. Seconded. All in favor. And make sure he goes and talks to staff. Yeah. Okay. That's Laverne and Mel. Okay. Thank uh, okay. Thomas and Mel. You had Laverne and Mel? Okay, sorry. Oh, uh, excuse me. Hey, Ms. Estabrook, so this is going to be tabled so we have more clarification before it will come back. You'll be notified when and if it comes back and in what form. And for the applicant, you should probably isolate some of these comments better and we'll get a better comment from the staff, even if you're going to remove variances, but it's preferable to then not having it turned down based on what's in front of us today. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm expecting some city official to contact me and discuss. No, not, so no, not a chance. You got to contact them. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, I mean, like uh, I applied for the variances, and though they created more variances, which are uh, not like not even required, and not to talk about like there, I, I don't see there is any point to create those variances which they have created. 
Okay, so you can speak, you can speak to staff about that. So if you want staff contacts for the commenting body departments, you can contact COFA at hamilton.ca and we will mm -hmm. be able to provide you the commenting bodies. And then you Thank can you. remove variances if you need to so that it's more clear. Yeah, okay. But anyway, we, what we can do, we are losing time. So, but we have to do. And all right, we're all adjourned. No choice. Okay. All right, we're all set for the next okay. file. We're hearing HMA 2302 for 1821 King Street East in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak as well as two interested parties. Okay. Is the applicant available? Yes. Hi. Name for the record. My name is Sahar. I'm uh, the agent on behalf of the owner of 1821 King Street East. Okay, did you read the comments that were posted? Yep, I read the comments. I've seen that there is three variants that has been denied and I agree with it. So I uh, made a presentation that uh, I will do, uh, I will propose all the parking in the back, including the barrier free. That will automatically waive the, the, the three variances that has been denied. But also- okay, so if, if, if what you're saying is, you're asking us to proceed and to make a decision on variances, but you're going to eliminate some of the variances that you're being asked. You have to tell us which ones and we'll strike those from the hearing. Variance number three, uh, seven and nine. That has been denied by the staff. Seven, nine. Okay, so you yes. want to proceed without... Um, asking just, for those variances yeah just i mean just uh, i want to um ask for a small changes in the variance uh i'm not sure if i have to table it or i have to present i my presentation is ready it just uh from seven uh, parking spots i the only option i have is to propose six parking spots uh, considering the existing condition of the lot okay, it's a small changes is it it's very small changes but i'm not sure like uh, is it worth to wait six more weeks for not uh, for the next hearing time uh so that's up to the committee to decide if they want to recirculate for the variance to be amended from six or seven parking spaces to six parking spaces all provided in the rear or if they wish to proceed i do believe the agent has a sketch showing what the proposal is um, but that's obviously up okay. for the committee members. And I have Margaret wishing to speak. Go ahead, Margaret. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, transportation planning has said that they have concerns with seven, eight, nine, and 10. So it's not just uh, three, uh, seven, and nine. There's also um, eight and 10 that seem to be a concern to transportation. Variance 10 has been supported by the staff. Only by planning staff, not transportation. Oh. Um, so um, you, do you think I should table it? Might be a prudent idea. I have David. Okay, David. I think I should make a uh, motion to table it just because it's got to bring a cleaner application here to the table if we can't start amending three or four variances. Yeah, eliminating variances is fine. That's within but the right. It doesn't but sound to like, amend, sounds to like it's kind of like she's changing them, not eliminating them. Yeah. Make a motion for table. Okay. Seconder, all in favor? Carried. Now, for the two of you, what's happening is there's things of concern. So it's not going to proceed at this time. They're going to have to restructure it and you'll get notice of it at that time. And if it's been restructured that doesn't bother you as much, then we're good. If you aren't, then you just come on back and we'll be happy to hear from you. Sure. Yeah, you do. You got it. My problem is the uh, uh, visual barrier. I, so I, I live I, right you, you had a question, not this isn't the time to provide comments on the application. If I thought you had a staff, process question. If a staff is okay with one of the variants. No, it's tabled. It's, it's tabled. Yeah, we're not doing it today. Oh, right. everything's stopped. Yeah, everything stopped. Thank you. Okay, bye. You have to keep saying, well, it's okay. It wasn't, I wasn't.
Okay, maybe we'll see you back, maybe we won't. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, and we are all set for the next file. So we're hearing HMB 2301 for 436 King William Street and 16 Stephen Street in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak and no other interested parties. Applicant's name for the record, please. Um, I'm the agent, Caitlin Gillis, planner with T. Johns Consulting on behalf of Sacagawea Nonprofit Housing. Okay, and no interested parties, no neighbors. Okay, you've read the comments, Caitlin. I have, and I have a, a couple of requests on the conditions just to um, clean up a couple steps on our end. Um, so this application is basically a repeat of a previous consent application. Um, but during the time we were clearing conditions, the properties had merged on title. Um, so for condition three, as proposed by zoning, they've asked for us to confirm the existing um, uses. Um, 16 Stephen is actually issued a building permit to convert the existing three story building to a 15 unit multiple dwelling. So that's currently under progress. And 436 King William has a building permit under review for a duplex. Um, so we wish to just not have to satisfy that condition. Um, and then condition four, which is to provide the survey evidence that both properties will um, conform to zoning. We completed um, an applicable law review for the exact development that's under building permit review. Um, which was completed September 28th, 2022. So we wish to not have to uh, push through paperwork, so to speak, um, to clear that condition. So if we could remove conditions three and four. That would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Dale, do you have any thoughts? I just haven't talked too much today. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. But her, her comments sound very well, and, and I would be in favor of if there are no other questions, I would make a motion to approve the application. Okay, Nancy. I'll second it with the removal of three and four. Okay, is all that in okay, Dale? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all in favor? Opposed? Seeing none. Carry. Thank you very much, committee. Kind of an oddball property if you drive by. So yeah. you're driving and this you drive into this house or you have to jog around it. Yeah. It's weird. All right, so we are all set for the next file. We are actually hearing HMA 2305 for 99 Augusta Street in Hamilton. We have the uh, agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Hey, okay. applicant's name for the record, even though I can read it under your face. Uh, Len Angelisi of Len Angelisi Design. Okay. No interested parties, no one else? No. Nope. I know you say it, I just like to make sure. Okay, you read the comments, I take it? I did. You like what nothing. you read? I like what I read, I have nothing to add. Okay, anybody? Move, seconded, Nancy, all in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Carried. Thank you. And we're all set for the next file. We're hearing HMA 2311 for 553 James Street North in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak and no other interested parties. Okay. We're, oh, we might have interested parties. I apologize. I will ask. Uh, sir, are you here for a specific application? Uh, you might not see much, but have a seat. Okay, applicant's name for the record, please. Hi there, uh, my name is Matthew Rivo. I'm the agent representing the owner. Okay, you read the comments? I have, uh, just a couple points to make. So um, I agree with the, the majority of the comments regarding heritage that'll be dealt with during the building permit application process. So I'm not concerned about that at all. Uh, as per the zoning examiner's comment, if we could please add what I would like to call a technical variance regarding parking. It's an existing condition. We're changing a legal um, non-conforming use to another legal non-conforming use that will that uh, has to do with an outdated bylaw, uh, as I've uh, outlined in my planning report. And uh, if uh, staff can agree to add that variance in, as per um, William's comments, then um, I'm happy to answer any other questions. 
Do you have a fix on what he's getting at in terms of the additional variance? Yes, it was provided in the comment package under the zoning uh, planning, or sorry, zoning staff's comments, okay. and it was an additional variance, um, just recognizing that there is no existing parking on the site. Okay, committee, David. I'm going to ask this question for our chairman. Uh, what kind of restaurant is this? <laughs> so, actually, it's not. It's a restaurant. Okay, there you go, Mark. Good old Ed's variety. It's been there forever. <laughs> I make a motion. <laughs> David? I make a motion as amended. Okay, seconder. Nancy, all in favor? Here. Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Council. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> And we love the North End, so keep it. <laughs> nice to hear. Thank you. All right, and we are all set for the next file. We're hearing FLA 2309 for 162 Humphrey Street in Flamborough. We have uh, the agent registered to speak and no other interested parties. Mr. Raja again, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, you read the comments on this one? Uh, yes, I did, and uh, I think this is, <laughs> this is okay. Yeah, one is denied and one is approved, and uh, we are agreed on this. Sorry, you are okay with the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being... I'm... So you want us to bring an applicant or a motion to approve number one and deny number two? You're okay with that? Yeah, that is fine, yeah. Okay, any questions from the committee? Okay, Where approval of number one, denial of number two as per staff. Okay, seconder. Mm. Tom, all in favor? Opposed? Carry. Hearings adjourned. Uh, <clears throat> All right, and we are all set for the next file. We're hearing uh, DNA 2307 for 6 Sydenham Street in Dundas. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. I see the agent there. Your name for the record. Good afternoon, Charles McPhail. You read the comments? I did. You're happy? I am. Questions from the committee? Nope, no questions. Nancy brings a motion Move for it. approval, seconded by Byrne. All in favor? Here. Opposed? None. Dale, you okay? Harry. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right, and we are all set for the next file. We're hearing FLA 2308 for a 138 McMoney's Drive in Flamborough. We have uh, the owner registered to speak as well as two interested parties, and we do have the owner wishing to speak first. Okay. Can somebody explain to me? Record. My name is Ghulam Ali Mohatrim. I'm the owner of 158 McMoney's Drive. Mm -hmm. No, I apologize. No. You are not the owner of the subject lands. You are a neighbor. You are an interested party. We are hearing from the owner of 138 McMoney's Drive, who is registered for this file. Okay, so I'm an, have an opportunity. I'm the adjacent, basically. Okay, go ahead. No, okay. You okay. will be muted if you do not. Okay, okay the applicant. Please, we, do you identify Sarah? Hi, hi, Council. I'm Sarah McClellan. I am the owner of 138 McMoney's Drive. Okay, so, do you want to speak at this time or do you want to hear the interested parties and then respond to their concerns? Um, I, I'd actually like to speak because I have actually had the um, pleasure of um, chatting with Morgan Gowans, the city planner who had okay. reviewed our file. Go ahead. I was, I was able to provide a little bit of context and some additional photos to Ms. Gowans and she had asked for a little bit more time to review the file. So I would actually like to ask that this be tabled at this time. Okay. Go ahead, Nancy. Sorry. Second. Seconded. Okay. okay. All in favor? Here. Okay. So for the um, 
both the applicant and the interested parties who are registered. There's a request for tabling, which means it's gonna be tabled. There'll be further discussions and then it'll be set for another hearing at some time in the future, at which time you'll be notified of its new form and content and then you can speak at that time. So this as hearings adjourned and we'll see you in the future. Sure. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Sarah, you can contact us if you want to discuss it as well, okay? No problem, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so okay. much. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, when I saw this three, first thing I thought of is some promotional money given by McDonald's. <laughs> Get your McMoney. <laughs> uh, we just need... A um, motion to adjourn if we are all done for the hearing or if there is any comments. Um, I guess uh, while I've got all the committee members, um, there has been information that the selection committee, um, or sorry, the selection process is going to be open starting so, uh, February 24th. We don't have any further information at this time, um, but it will, I believe more information will be posted on the city's website um, on November 20th. Or February you twenty fourth. Let me know, February knowing I won't look at the website. Apparently, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, I believe it's going until the beginning of April. As we sit. Yeah. yeah I, for no, no, the meeting is still proceeding. Okay. So if <laughs> if um we have a motion for adjourning, I just need to somebody to adjourn. turn on the microphone, Thomas. Okay. Sure. All right.